Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about a new topic called periodic table, specifically subtopic number one, classifications of elements. Dmitry Mendeleev was a Russian chemist and invented that device, the periodic table, back in 19th century. Everything in the universe is created from different combinations of the elements in this table. This table is read from the left to right and from the top to the bottom with elements arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So this increasing atomic number represented by the number of protons in the atoms of the element which we already learned this in chapter 1. The way the elements are arranged in periodic table reveals a pattern of chemical properties that tells us about how the nature operates. So the elements are said to have same chemical properties according to how they are arranged. It's either in a vertical column, we call it as group, or in a horizontal row, which we call it as period. So in this chapter, we are going to look at how periodic trends will vary according to group and period. The reason elements in the same group behave similarly is because they have the same number of valence electron but different number of shell. So what is meant by this valence electron? Valence electrons means electrons are located at outermost shell. This outermost shell tells you that the shell is located far away from the nucleus. Let's say in your element you have n equal to 1 until n equal to 3 means your outermost shell gonna be n equal to 3. Other than outermost shell to be used, you could also found the term as valence shell. So they basically means the same thing. But you have to be careful with the, another term called valence electron because valence shell and valence electron is completely different to one another. Okay, to see this more clearly about what is meant by this group, how are they assigned? So we're going to look at this one example involving group 1. So this group 1, we know they're going to have the same number of valence electron. Let's say we take this hydrogen. So hydrogen is located at period 1 and the number of proton here is 1. Since this is neutral atom, means the electron is going to be 1 as well. So the period tells you about how many shells do they have n equal to 1 means they got only one shell and then the electron is 1 therefore hydrogen got only one electron at their outermost shell. Let's compare hydrogen with other elements that is located in group 1 as well to see whether they have the same number of valence electron or not. So let's take this sodium. So sodium is located at period number 3. So period number 3 indicates the shell will have 3 of them. So 1, 2 and 3. And then this 11 belongs to the proton number as well as their electrons. So 11 electrons to be accommodated into these 3 shells. We learn n equal to 1, l equal to 0. S orbital got only 1 orientation means they can occupy up to 2 electrons. When n equal to 2, l equal to 0 and 1, we have s and p orbital. Total up, we're going to have 8 electrons. So we have 2, 4, 6 and 8. All together, we already have 10. We are now left with only 1 electron. So this 1 electron will be located on this third shell. So if we could see we have exactly the same number of electron in sodium and compared to the hydrogen atom which is 1. So that's why they are located in group 1. To summarize, valence electron which determines the 18 group present in the periodic table are not necessarily comes from the valence shell. They can only be determined from the valence electronic configurations. So valence shell is not the same as the valence electron. We could see it from these configurations and we are going to learn about this afterward. Period which can be determined horizontally tells that elements in the same period will have the same number of shell but different valence electron. They are basically the opposite to the group. So let's say we take this example for period 3. Period 3 consists of sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, 
phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and also argon. So the blue box belongs to the transitions elements. So transitions elements are only starts at period 4. We're going to look at only two elements and how the electrons are arranged and to see whether the number of shell is the same or not. So we're going to take this sodium. So sodium got 11 electrons with three shells. So we have these configurations. And then we're going to compare it with chlorine. Chlorine with 17 electrons, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, altogether 10. We are left with only seven. So all the seven electrons will be located on the third shell. So you could see both sodium and chlorine, even though they have different valence electron, they still got the same number of shells. So elements with the same number of shells, we call it as having the same period. All the elements in the periodic table can be classified into four main blocks according to their valence electronic configurations. So the first block you need to know is S block. So how do we know whether an element is located in S block? Whenever you see the electronic configuration stops until S, means they belong to S orbital. And we have learned S orbital can occupy up to two electrons. Therefore, there will be two groups involved for S orbital. The groups involved for S orbital gonna be group 1 with valence electronic configurations of NS1. You could see, since this is only one electron at the outermost shell, Therefore, S to be occupied is only one electron. While the other one going to be group 2. Group 2 got two electrons on the S orbital. That's why the configurations end with S2. Next is P block. To determine element that is located at P block, look for the electronic configurations that ends with P orbital. We know P orbital can occupy maximums of six electrons. Therefore, we need to expect six groups to be involved. So the valence electronic configurations for P orbital is based on NS2 and P6. So the S orbital will always have two electrons in it. And only the P orbital will vary according to the groups. As for group 13, only one electron will be filled in the P orbital. As for group 14, we know we're going to have NS2 and P2. Group 15, we're going to have three electrons on the P orbital. Group 16, four electrons. Group 17, five electrons. And lastly, group 18, we're going to have NS2 and P6 fully occupied. The third block is D block. So D orbital can accommodate 10 electrons in total. So the 10 groups involved are from group 3 until group 12. So D orbital is slightly different from S and P orbital where they usually be determined by looking at the orbital they end up with. For S, we have S only. For P, we have P. So since our principle suggests the orbital should be filled in increasing energy order, Therefore, the valence electronic configurations for D orbital going to be NS2, N-1, D. So, since it starts from this group 3, group 3 here indicates the valence electron will have 3 of them. So, from this NS, we have this completely filled S2. So, they already contribute to 2 electrons. N-1, then we have D. On this D orbital, we're going to have only one electron. So 2 plus 1, altogether 3. That's why the name of this group is group 3. Let's look at group 12, which will end this D block. So group 12 has a configuration of NS2, N-1, D10. So if we look at the name of this group, group 12, means they're going to have altogether 12 electrons on this configuration. So we could see 2 comes from the S orbital, 10 comes from the D orbital. So altogether 12 electrons. That's why the name is group 12. So for group 4 until group 11, they're going to have NS2, N-1, D. For this one, we have 2 electrons. 
group 5 3 electron group 6 4 electron group 7 5 electrons group 8 6 electron group 9 7 electron group 10 8 electron group 11 9 electron so altogether 10 electrons for the orbital Last but not least is F block. So F block, they belong to lanthanides and actinides series. So they are located at the bottom two rows and separated from the rest of the periodic table. So for our matriculation syllabus, we only focus on these three blocks up here. From the periodic trend, we now have all the metals in orange that are located in the left side and in the middle of the periodic table. Then we have metalloids in orange that lie along the line that separates the metal from the non-metal. And lastly, we have non-metals in blue located in the upper right quarter of the table. Let's try this example to check your comprehension. So you have configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p1. So from these configurations, the questions wants you to determine what is the valence electronic configurations, what is the group, what is the period, and also what is the block. So to determine valence electronic configurations, you cannot simply rely on the outermost shell you could see here, which is 4. Since this is electronic configurations, they must have something to do with the determinations of group and also the block. So, look at the orbitals you end up with. The orbital here is P, means they must be in P orbital. Recall again, what is the valence electronic configurations for P orbital? It must be NS2 and P6. Okay, that is the general one, means your outermost shell is going to be the same since it is the same and then look for the outermost shell 4 in here means we're going to take all of them comes from the n equal to 4 therefore valence electronic configuration is going to be 4s2 4p1 to determine the group they must rely on the valence electronic configurations so our group will be in p block so the group going to be 2 plus 1 means group 13 and then for period just look at the valence shell so we have 4 means the period gonna be 4 and lastly block because we already determined the group is in group 13 therefore the block obviously P block next example is about element X information given is only about the group which is 12 and also the period equal to 4 so when we see this group equal to 12 means they belong to d orbital d orbital got the valence electronic configurations of n s2 n minus 1 d okay and then another information here is period when it says period means this period belongs to the outermost shell so your electronic configurations must have until n equal to 4 that's the first hint so the question asks you for electronic configurations. Electronic configurations is not the same as valence electronic configurations. From the valence electronic configurations, we could determine the group. But if the questions only ask for electronic configurations, you need to write the configuration starts from the inner shell, which is 1s until n equal to 4, and it all depends on your block. Okay, since this is n equal to 4 as the outermost shell and group 12 means you're gonna have electronic configurations up to 3d10. So let's check whether they comply with these informations given. Group 12 means you got to have this 4s2, 3d10, altogether 12 electrons. Okay, and then period 4, your outermost shell is n equal to 4. That's it. This is for your electronic configurations. Next, the question asks for what is the most stable ion to be formed from this element X? So let's recall, what is the purpose of making ion? To achieve stability of noble gas configurations. To achieve stability, you need to make the electron closest to the nucleus. It's either you add some more electrons 
or you remove electrons to make sure the electrons are the closest to, to the nucleus. So in here, we could see we only have 4 as 2 at n equal to 4. Supposedly, n equal to 4, your L gonna be 0, 1, 2, and 3. Means they can be up to f sub shell, so for f. But then, which one is easier? To add some more electrons until all the electrons in n equal to 4 is complete? Or simply remove these two electrons? So we would say that it is easier to remove only these two electrons so that your n equal to 3 will be fully occupied and they are closest to the nucleus. By removing electrons means we are going to form cation because cation indicates the number of electron decreases. So as for the most stable ion to be formed, it's going to be X2+. Thank you for your attention. Stay tuned for 3.2 video. Bye.